Today we have a medical procedure with a Western Diamondback rattlesnake. Last week, a keeper noticed that this snake had a small lump near the base of its tail. Uh, we weren't sure what it was, so now we're transported to the hospital where we're going to do our medical procedure. Their venom is really something you have to be concerned about. So there's no music, there's no talking. Uh, we're wholly focused on what we're doing. So we're safe. It's illegal for a private person to have a venomous reptile within New York City. So it was given to us by the Department of Environmental Conservation after it was confiscated from a private individual. All right, snake's coming out. Basically, we're going to put the snake's head and upper body into the tube uh, and restrain it by the body. That will allow us to work safely with the snake. It's definitely one of the more dangerous things we do here. We have an anesthetic gas called isofluorine, and we're just running it through this system. The nice thing about having them in this tube is it fits right into a standard face mask like you'd use on a dog or cat. Easy, girl. All right, how's she doing, guys? She's out, I think. Out, out? She's tense, but she's out. The animal has an abscess that has occurred by her cloaca, which is the opening of her digestive and reproductive tracts. And rotate her slightly to get this. All right. Abscesses are little pockets of infection. And sometimes the body can clear them without any help, but a lot of times we have to open up the abscess and flush out the infection so that the animal can heal. Because she's a snake and because they can heal slow, what probably happened was she had this injury that was an open wound and it got infected and how it healed was it just closed the infection in. So I'm gonna go in today and just try to clean that all out. The concern though, when you have a recurring swelling, especially in an animal as they're getting older, is it could be a cancer. Here it comes. And another little pebble size abscess. Come out, you. Beautiful. Thank you. We're going to get ready to wake her up. There we go. There Hi, we go. lady. If she suffered a similar injury in the wild, she likely would not survive this. This is the tissue that I got out. And the pathology team is going to look at that to help tell us what kind of tissue that is and make sure there isn't something more concerning. I'm going to untape you. OK. I think the surgery went pretty well. We found that the site was still infected, so I'm glad we went in there, we cleaned it out, took out some of the tissue that I think was causing the problem. Snake's coming out. Watch out. Hey, Ken. Knock, hey. knock. So, we've got results for your uh, diamondback rattlesnake. I am a pathologist here with WCS. Main jobs for us with WCS are to uh, do disease investigation. The good news is I'm not seeing anything that looks like cancer in there. Fantastic news. They're right. going to be very happy to hear that. Right. What I found is that there is some fungus in here. As far as this fungus goes, this snake had kind of an open wound, right? So I think that these are probably taking advantage of that uh, open wound and causing a secondary infection. The problem with most of our antifungal drugs are they're a drug that an animal would take orally or eat every day. And rattlesnakes only eat once a week, if that. So we're gonna have to get creative on how to get this animal to take her meds. The other challenge is she's a venomous snake, so it's not a small deal to get her out and give her her medication. So there's a lot of challenges we're gonna have to work through with the reptile department on how we're gonna treat her going forward. This is one of the few animal houses on grounds I have keys to. Mainly so I can get in this fridge after hours and get anti-venom if the police were to need it for an emergency. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. 
We got the biopsy results back. There's fungus. They weren't able to speciate it out yet, but the concerning thing with the fungus is it's actually invading into the tissue itself. Because of that, we're giving oral antifungals, which I know is never our ideal situation no. with these guys. Not with the venomous animals. We're going to space it out to every 72 hours just to limit the amount of handling and risk in this situation. Oral medications are difficult, especially in snakes, because we have to tube the snake. All right, snake's coming out. And that is statistically the most dangerous part of venomous keeping. We need to get her into a tube so that we can get the catheter into her mouth. Unfortunately, that requires a tube, which then puts my hand in danger. Hey, well, she seems to be wanting to volunteer to open her mouth, so that's a good start. Come on, straighten up a little bit. Once the snake is in the tube, we have to insert a catheter down into the snake's throat until it's deep enough into the stomach and we can inject the medication. This is why we hate oral medications with venomous. <laughs> this particular snake is especially challenging because her head is so large. We have to use a large diameter tube, but that also allows her to scrunch her neck up and kind of get into an S shape and doesn't allow the catheter to go down her throat. I try and flush a little water in and see if that helps her straighten out. Yeah, sure. If we just get it in a little way further, I'd be OK giving the meds, because I think they'd probably go down. She's trying to eat it now. That's good. It's kind of stopping about right there, but. We're kind of like here? Yeah. All right, why don't you tilt her up? I'll give the meds, and hopefully she'll keep it down. Okay. She can strike a little bit out of that, too. It's just why you bunch of fingers in. Okay. This snake is being really a challenge. She does not want to swallow the tube. The prospect of having to do this every three days is not my favorite. It's stressful to the animal, and it's stressful to all the staff involved. But I need to make sure this snake gets medication. 